everyone, and welcome to the campus of Western Kentucky University. I'm Randy Lee, along with Leo Peckinpah and our sideline reporter, Terry Obi. The Mean Green of North Texas are here today to meet the Western Kentucky University Hilltoppers. WKU has destiny in their hands with two games remaining in the regular season with a 5-1 conference record and 7-3 and overall. Went out, and the tops repeat as Conference U.S. East Division champs. At 4-5, and five, the Mean Green need two more wins to become bowl eligible, and they look to pull off a major upset today to stop the Hilltoppers' 11-game conference home field winning streak. 24 seniors will be playing their last regular season game at Fikes Field today. 24 seniors who have been a part of a conference championship, two bowl victories, and an overall record of 34 and 14. And we'll be right back with the game. You're watching WKU on ESPN3. Joining us from the Hill, Western Kentucky University football against the Mean Green of North Texas. We are now waiting our coin toss. Terry Obi is on the field today, reporting as to what's going to be going on on the Hilltopper sidelines. And we always know when the Hilltoppers win it, they take the ball first. We'll see what happens here with this coin flip here this afternoon. Nice time. Nobody touch it. It is ahead. Defer, check that one. All right. North Texas has won the toss. North Texas has won the toss and deferred to the second half. Yeah, Terry, you got it, Randy, huh? Yeah, Terry Obi, we uh, we. We're always surprised when the opposing team gives the Hilltoppers the football first. Yeah, you know what? I'm surprised too, though, because that's what Coach Prime wants. He wants the ball first because he wants to score really quick to put pressure on North Texas. He, he loves to do that to the opposing team. But and, what a wonderful day in football today. And like most uh, years, especially as of late, Leo, it's a fast starting offense. They've been able to you know, put up points early and have sizable leads in each of the last three conference games in the first half. But what's really interesting, the coach down on the field, especially special teams, he wants to score on this play. Because if you score on special team, the first play of the game, kickoff return, that's kind of, you, you really make a statement in this type of atmosphere. Guys, of the 48 scoring drives for WKU this year, 23 have been two minutes or less. It doesn't take them long to get busy, does it? It does not. No. Our coin toss was brought to you by Stuart Ritchie Construction. They will remind all of you they are committed to providing the perfect experience on and off the field. Randy, Leo, and Terry with you on the Hilltopper IMG Sports Radio Network and ESPN3. The Mean Green will kick it off from right to left, and there is a little bit of a breeze in the face of the North Texas kicker, Eric Kenna. The Hilltoppers are not expected to be able to play the Karius Fant today. He didn't practice all week. He's not out there on the kick return team, so Lucky Jackson will replace him. He stands at the six yard line, and Kylan Towner, one of the nation's best in kickoff returns, is at the two. The majority of the players are in shadows now as Kenna kicks a line driver down the middle of the field. It bounces in the end zone and rolls out the back edge, and it is a touchback. It's first and 10 for the tops, and up front from left to right, Forrest Lamp, Brandon Ray, Max Halpin, Dennis Edwards, Darrell Williams. There is a pro football focus this week, ranked the Hilltopper offensive line as the seventh best offensive line in college football. They are special. Shaq Johnson starts at tight end. Ace Wales is the running back. Mike White, the quarterback. And the wide receivers are Nicholas Norris, Taewon Taylor. Nicholas Fant will not... I should say, uh, Fant will not start. Taylor goes in motion from left to right. We're underway. And a handoff to Wales running left side. He's hit in the backfield of the 23. He's able to slip through the hands of the defensive lineman and carry it for about two out to the 27-yard line. Malik DeLonga had a chance to bring him down for a two-yard loss, but Ace is too slippery. They'll give him forward progress, actually, out almost to the 29-yard line. The nation's uh, number one rushing touchdown maker, 17. He's had 15 of those touchdowns in the last seven ball games. For all the passing the Hilltoppers do, they actually lead Conference USA in rushing touchdowns this year with 23. It's second and six from the 24. Play action, White over the middle of the seam. Oh, he missed an open receiver to the 45-yard line. Just missed the outstretched hand of Lucky Jackson, who ran a slant. 
He may have scored if the pass would have been right there on line. Tight coverage from a corner. It's incomplete. Out there covering him was a speedy Chad Davis, and it's third down and six. Davis in there replacing uh, Eric Jenkins, probably their best uh, defensive back. His three interceptions this season. Mean Green have intercepted 11 passes this year. White stands tall in the pocket. He's over middle for a first down to the 37-yard line. That is Norris. And Nick Norris takes it out near the 45-yard line. Nicholas Norris on a 15-yard pass play. Prior to the start of the game, he only needed 66 yards to get to 1,000. That would put him and Taewon Taylor at the 1,000-yard mark this season. And that has never happened before in Hilltopper football history. Two to get to 1,000. First and 10 now at the 44-yard line as WKU moves it from left to right. Take a receiver out of the game, a wide receiver, and they bring in Jimmy Sims, the uh, converted offensive lineman to tight end. Ever since their conversion of moving him to tight end, their running game has picked up. Here's a jet sweep to Taylor. Hit in the backfield. He breaks one tackle, but he still loses yardage. The jet sweep was read to perfection, and it was slowed down from the very outset by defensive end Jared Combs. He was eventually knocked down by the linebacker, Joshua Wheeler, and that'll be a loss of three for Taewon Taylor. We will see that jet sweep, well, you know, usually two or three times a game for this offense. Second down and 13 now for the 41. North Texas goes with a down three. Four linebackers, four defensive backs. White rolling right, man in his face. He's in trouble. He breaks two tackles. He wheels around. He stays on his feet. He lobs it down the middle, and it's caught. Holy moly! A little pop fly pass that was reeled in by Nicholas Norris after quarterback Mike White escaped two defenders who almost brought him down. Now there's a penalty marker down in front of the North Texas bench at the 46-yard line of Western Field. Kentucky University. Offense number 64. Five-yard penalty, second down. It'll be a legal man downfield. So Edwards saw White rolling, thought maybe he was going to run. And Edwards was downfield past the line of scrimmage, and they'll wipe away that pass play. And a Houdini act from Mike White. Yeah, you, you thought he made a big uh, mistake there, but he had time to dump that ball over here and throw it up and throw it away, but he avoided a sack. A uh, great uh, move by White to scramble out of there. And sometimes when they hold that ball that long, and they, you know, as a lineman, you just kind of lose track of the where you are on the field. He slithered between two pass rushers and not only broke one a tackle from one defender, he broke a tackle from two. He moved the ball back to the 36-yard line, so it's now second down at 18 for the top, just getting started. 12.45, the opening quarter from Fikes Field, and there's no score. Shotgun snap to White, firing it deep down the middle, on the money to Taewon, makes the catch at the 25, he broke a tackle, he's to the 10, he's to the 5, hey! That is a topper touchdown to Taewon Taylor against his high-risk, high-reward North Texas defense, Leo. Well, they got him one-on-one -on -one down there with uh, the cornerback, Brooks. And Brooks had a great shot at making the tackle as Taylor had to wait on the ball. But guess what? Taylor, who's really gotten a lot stronger the last couple of years, just ran right through the tackle. 59-yard bomb to Taewon Taylor, and no one in college football over the last two years has more 50-yard receptions than Taewon Taylor. And that goes for 59 yards in the score. So North Texas gives the Hilltoppers the ball first, and as they have done so often, they score the first possession. Skyler Simcox hits the extra point. It's perfect. And with 12.31 to go here in our first quarter, the Hilltoppers are in front by the score of 7-0 on Mike White's 25th touchdown pass of the year. And for Taewon, he now has 35 in his career and 11 this year. We talked about that quick strike offense and the fact that almost half their touchdown drives this year took two minutes or less. Classic example right there. Five plays, 75 yards, and 229 on the drive. Jerry Obi, we talked about it. It's just uh, really amazing here lately the teams who have won the kickoff or the point flip have allowed the hilltoppers to take it first and they paid for it exactly you know we talked about that earlier you know what because we like to strike wku likes to strike early and strike really fast what a what a great play but we talked about it earlier like uh, north texas like to play cover four defense about 25 percent of the time and that time they sent the blitz it was one-on-one in the middle of the field was wide open leo so you hit it right on the head talking about 
that one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's, it's kind of impossible to hold uh, him in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Hilltoppers are now preparing for their blue cotton kickoff. They'll boot it away from the 35-yard line. Alex Rinella tops the ball, hit the top of it, bounced it at 25, skips down to the 15, now picked up at the 10. The Mean Green return it to the 20. Oh, a big hit at the 23-yard line. Wow. That hit came from Holt. Wow. Ben Holt with a helmet rattler at the 23-yard line. Yeah, he's the freshman, and he's one of the biggest hitters on the team. Plays both sides of the football. And of course, an integral part of the special teams as well, as you see right there. 12.24 to go in the opening quarter. Here come the Mean Green for the first time. Now they've had an issue this year in pass blocking. They've allowed 38 quarterback sacks. Uh, only one college has allowed more this year, that's San Jose State. The quarterback is Mason Fine, a talented freshman. They empty the backfield, they snap it to Fine. And it's a design quarterback draw. He will run up the middle and he ducks down quickly. Coming up to make that hit was TJ McCollum. Fine has had an 80-yard touchdown run this year. That was a gain of four, and it's second down and six. He also has 265 yards in running losses. Uh, so he's been trapped back there several times and hadn't been able to wiggle out. Alex Morris was a three-year backup at Alabama, actually a four-year backup at Alabama, redshirted one year, uh, had a fifth year, transferred to North Texas, started game one against SMU, but Fine has been the starter since. They're in the pistol, a lot of movement. Here's a run to left by Ivory. Cuts back from, well, didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Hilltopper shut that one down. There's not a team in Conference USA that is tougher to run against than WKU. Keith Brown leading the way. He leads Conference USA in tackles with 99. No gain for Ivory, who is starting for Jeffrey Wilson. An 833-yard rusher this year out the knee problem. In fact, he had surgery earlier this week. So no game for Ivory. It is third down and six for the Mean Green at the 27-yard line. Hilltoppers out early 7-0, 11-10 to play first quarter. Sam Rice will snap it. It's a transfer from SMU. Motion from left to right. They have three wide receivers. He dribbles the ball back to the ground. Fine picks it up over the middle. It's incomplete. Looking for their tight end, Thaddeus Thompson. The coverage was tight from the defensive back, Leverick Johnson. And North Texas will have to punt. It's fourth down and six. WK, you dialed up the heat right there, and boy, just as fine through that football. He was leveled. So the topper defense comes up big on the first series. Fine was fortunate just to pick it up. It rolled back to him. Here's Eric Cannon with a punt from the top. Left of making the fair catch is Kylan Towner at the Hilltopper 26 yard line. 47 yard punt, no return. 10.52 to go in our opening quarter on a 59 yard touchdown pass from White to Taylor. The Hilltoppers lead it here in the first quarter by the score of 7-0. to zero. Team consecutive win against a Conference USA opponent here at Fikes Field today. They've won 11 consecutive regular season games against the opposition from Conference USA. And dating back to the Sunbelt Conference, the last year they played in the Sunbelt Conference. And they're at... They're outscoring their opponents in conference games at home by an average of 50 to 25 during Jeff Rom's three years as head coach. Now they have it first down and 10 for the 25-yard line. They're working from left to right. They're in shadows. Just a little bit of sunshine right now. That's on the North Texas bench. White play action. Steps back in the pocket. Going deep again. Down the middle. Taylor caught it. He's going to go again. Holy moly. They went right back to it. Two times in a row. They go deep down the middle, and they burn him this time. They blew right by Nate Brooks, and it's 13-0 tops. Well, it's a risk-reward type defense, and when you roll your corners up that tight and you like to blitz, um, you better have good coverage. And Taylor, they don't have a match for him in the secondary right now. Oh, my goodness. Taylor, a 59-yard touchdown catch, a 75-yard touchdown catch. It's 13-0, just like that with 10.40 to go in the opening quarter. And how about that throw? Taylor Perfect. never broke stride. Mike White, right on the money with a deep pass. Extra point from Simcox into the berm. Perfect. Mike White has now thrown 20 touchdowns and just two interceptions in his last seven games. His passing percentage, his completion percentage, 
up around 75, 76% over that uh, spell as well. As this kid's really found himself. And you know, you got to think too that uh, he had a little rest maybe after he set out last year. And of course, getting used to those receivers, it takes a while. But boy, he's, uh, he is razor sharp right now. And Terry, at least the last four games here for WKU, we've seen safeties as much as 15 yards off the ball. Uh, Mike Eckler's your defensive coordinator and, and look for him to make a change. Here comes a blue cotton kickoff from the 35 yard line from Ranella. Wilson will gather it in in the sunshine at a four yard line. He runs it to the right side to the 10 to the 20. Tiptoes up over the 25. He's able to get it out to the 30 yard line. First and 10 for North Texas there. Three Hilltoppers on top of him. And leading the way down for WKU is their backup safety, Nathan Roche out of Louisville. Mean green for them. They need to answer quickly, I would think. Uh, a team battling some injury problems today. Their leading rusher is out. Their best corner is out. They have a defensive end that's out. And they're down two touchdowns, and this game isn't even five minutes old. They were three downs and out in their first possession. And Sam er Rice is the center. He's a six foot four senior out of Koppel, Texas. And they have a running back off the right shoulder, a fine in the gun. And here's a snap. It's slow again around his ankles. He retrieves it. He runs to his right. He's in trouble. He's going to get to the sideline. And he shoved out of bounds after maybe a one yard pickup by outside linebacker TJ McCollum, the junior from Birmingham, Alabama. The snaps from Rice, uh, that was slow. The long snap for the punt was low. They've had two low snaps to find in the shotgun. Yeah, and the heat he's facing from that uh, defensive front right now, it, it really cuts into his decision making. I'm talking about the quarterback, fine. McCollum pushing fine out of bounds for no gain. It's second down and 10 now from the 30. Hilltoppers with a down four. They're going to only rush three. Fine goes down the middle and threw it past his receiver on a slant over the middle. Looking for Turner Smiley, who has 12 catches this year. Fine has misfired on his first two passes. And it's third down and 10 for North Texas from the 30 yard line. Fine is completing 60% of his passes this year for 1,563 yards. He has six touchdowns, five interceptions. So not great numbers in regards to putting points to the board, only six touchdown passes, and he started their last eight games. Third and 10, and the toppers are blitzing. They may be offsides. Fine will roll to his left. He's back to his own 15, squares his shoulders and lobs it down the field, and it is over. The intended receiver, tight end Thompson, but I believe Hilltopper linebacker E.A. Boonaway was offsides. Well, that will be the call, uh, the linesman. Offside, defense, number nine. Five-yard penalty, third down. Surprise, we didn't see more than one flag. It was pretty obvious. My apologies, uh, E.A. Boonaway. It was on Amarius Bryant. So it is third and five now, the second penalty for WKU today. 9.48 to go, first quarter. White to Taylor two times for 59 yards and 75 yards and put the Hilltoppers in front, 14-0. North Texas now employing three wide receivers to the left side and one to the right. They'll stab it from their 35-yard line. Fine normally runs for his life. Once again, only one team this year in college football has allowed more quarterback sacks in North Texas. He'll take it. Here comes a big rush out to the left side, right on the money to the 39-yard line. But a great one-on-one -on -one tackle is made by Keith Brown. Brown stopped Kelvin Smith, who's 252 pounds, from getting across the 40. Oh, Whoa. my goodness. There was a very kind spot. Love to see the replay here. There's, well, I think... The replay would probably back this up. That is a bad spot. And they're going to review this one. That, that is right in front of us. It didn't appear with the way Brown was able to square his shoulders and make that tackle and turn Smith sideways. He was able to get to the 40 yard line. I had him a foot or two anyway. Uh, but I didn't think it was that close. So they are going to take a look at it wisely. 
Topper Sutman a score of 14-0. We look at the replay. No. He's not even to the 39 yard no, line. No, no, no. Yeah, so that challenge I'm sure will be, um, they'll turn that one over. That, that is a definitely a short of the 40 yard line. If you can score extra points with the monthly budget and your family's comfort with energy saving natural gas appliances, Atmos Energy customers in Kentucky can save up to $400 on the purchase of a qualifying natural gas furnace or water heater and your family will stay warm and cozy all winter long. To find out more, call Atmos Energy at 888-286-6700 or visit them at atmosenergy.com backslash efficiency. And here's the replay. The runner was down at the 39 and a half yard line. Fourth down. So it'll go for four yards to the tight end Smith. That's his sixth catch of the year, and we'll see what Sean Latrell will do on fourth and uh, half a yard. They're already down 14-0. They're hoping to get the six wins and be bowl eligible. Young team. Uh, They're going for they it. They may roll the dice here. They're five out of 14 on fourth downs this season. It's less than 40%. Fine is a running quarterback with a half yard to go. He's in the pistol. Teams that have tried to run it on short yardage at the defensive tackles for the Old Toppers have not been successful. Fourth and less than one. Fullback goes in motion to the left. Here's a snap to Fine, hand off to Ivory. Whoa! Oh! He's met face to face, and that'll be a two yard loss in the backfield. That was Nick Dawson Prince, who is healthy and has been playing great football the last three games. Well, I mean, they just lined up, WKU did, in what we used to call the old 65 goal line defense. You don't hardly ever see that around the midfield stripe, and they just dared them to try to run that football, and it didn't work. Brent stops Ivory for a one-yard loss. So with 9-10 to go in the opening quarter, the Toppers have the ball, first and 10 for the 38, and we'll take a timeout. WKU 14, North Texas 0. Randy, Leo, and Chris with you, along with Terry and Russ from WKU. The Hilltoppers are leading North Texas 14 to zero. Thanks for joining us on our Hilltopper IMG Sports Radio Network across the Commonwealth, as well as on ESPN3 today. Big fourth down stop by defensive end Brents has enabled the Hilltoppers to start their third drive at the North Texas 38 yard line. They already have a two touchdown lead. It's 14-0, and not every, not everyone's in the big house yet. Hoppin will snap it for the 38-yard line. Wales off the left shoulder, White in the gun. He'll fake it to Wales, and he wings it across the field. It's right on the money, Lucky Jackson. He sidesteps the defender, comes down the sideline to the 25-yard line. Lucky Jackson, growing up before our eyes here the last few weeks, the freshman from Lexington now has 17 catches, and he now has 12 in his last four games, Leo, including just a catch here for this being his fourth game, so he still has a lot of a game to play in this one being his fourth. Yeah, and the unfortunate injury to Nakarius Fant just gave him opportunity, and he seized it. 15 yards for a first down to Jackson. White back to pass, firing it right side, just over the outstretched fingertip of the defensive back, Ashton Preston. He may have tipped it. The ball was just shy of Norris, who was standing on the near sideline at the eight-yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Tough throw right there. Tried to dump it over the corner there and didn't put quite enough air on underneath it. White with college football's fifth best passer rating. And he's helping that out today. 26 touchdown passes. Screen to the right side. Taylor dropped it as he turned up field to run. It's incomplete. You rarely see Taewon drop it. The blocker for him was Norris and there were two mean green right on him. So if Taylor holds on to it. Chances are it would not have been much of a game. And the Hilltoppers now have third down and 10 after that 15-yard pass to Lucky Jackson. Back-to-back -back misfires, and it's third and 10. They have Jackson wide left, Norris and Taylor wide right. Donatel, the tight end, is on the left side, and the running back is Wales. Halpin snapped to White. The blitz. blitz is on. He's hit as he throws it right on the money. Donatel broke a tackle to 15. He cuts inside the 10 and goes to the 5. White knocked backwards. He's okay. He hung right in there and hit Donatel, who broke a tackle as soon as he caught it. 
and Donatel takes it for 18 yards down to the mean green five for its first and goal. And one of the best tacklers on this team, maybe the best, Keshawn McLean. A touchdown saving one-on-one -on -one tackle there. White was pounded right between the one and four prior to making that pass. They're in the pistol, the ball's at the five yard line, first and goal. Here's a snap from Halpin to hand it off to Wales, running up behind Halpin. Picks his way down to the three yard line. Sit up there, it'll be second down and goal. He's thrown backwards harshly. Second down for the tops inside the five. That tack was made by Calvin Miner, a junior out of Louisville. The Texas just south of Denton, where North Texas is located. Two yards for Ace, who has 17 rushing touchdowns. Second in all of college football. The Toppers get to play from the far sideline with 7.23 to go in this first quarter. WKU leading North Texas, 14-0. It's a snap to White. Wales runs it again left side, hit it a six, spins backwards, and now he's knocked down at the seven. So they sniffed that one out. DeLonga... Senior from Cedar Hill, Texas, bringing him down for a four-yard loss. Third and goal from the seven. Jeff Brom sends out three wide receivers to the right. That'll be Norris, Jackson, and Taylor. And they have Donatel, the tight end, on the other side. Wales is a setback, White in the gun, third and goal from the seven, and here's a snap. He looks, he looks, he looks over the middle, incomplete, slightly behind Donatel, who is wrapped up by free safety James Gray. And it's fourth down, and here comes Skyler Simcox for a field goal try with 6.27 to play in quarter one. Simcox this year has made eight of 11. So be a short one, only a 24-yard try. Less than 30 yards, he's three for three this year. Nolan Downing will snap it. Jake Collins holds it. Skyler Simcox to kick it with the right foot. Standing in sunshine. Snap, put down. Here it comes from Simcox. It's on the berm, and it is perfect. Six minutes, 22 seconds are left, so the Hilltoppers able to turn that fourth down stop into three points. And with 6.22 left to go in the first quarter, the Hilltoppers behind two long touchdown passes and a great defensive play. They lead North Texas by the score of 17-0. Shark Shredding's business is to keep yours confidential, and our offensive shred of the game is going to the combo of Mike White and Taewon Taylor. A 59-yard touchdown pass and a 75-yard touchdown pass to Taylor, both on the same pattern in the same quarter. Yeah, just a deep post pattern. Uh, first pass a uh, little bit underthrown, but enough that uh, Taylor, one-on-one -on -one with um, the safety back there, ran through the tackle, but the second one, boy, it was just right there. Here's a blue cotton kickoff from Ronella. High spinner pulled down at the seven yard line by Wilson. He runs to the 20, over the hash mark to the 25. He's able to step his way up the middle of the field to the 27. North Texas has it first and 10 there. Holt in there on the stop, as well as DeAndre Ferris. And there's a WKU player down at the 26 yard line. He is on his right hip. So the Hilltoppers have an injured player. They will take a look at him yeah. with six minutes and 14 seconds left to play in this opening quarter with WKU leading by the score of 17-0. And we certainly hope to bring you a happy Med Center Health postgame show tonight. Med Center Health is the official health care provider of Western Kentucky University. They have now rolled the Hilltopper player over on his back at the 26. Mean Green, this will be their third possession uh, of the football game. They've yet to get a first down. And that uh, WKU defensive front uh, has been a little bit too much to handle. U.S. Bank is proud to be the exclusive, exclusive cornerstone partner of WKU Athletics. All of us serving you at U.S. Bank. That appears to be Jason Johnson, who's a freshman safety from Pahokee, Florida. Johnson is now in a seated position at the 25. 
He hasn't made an effort to stand yet. And now they're going to pull him up, and he's on both feet. So Johnson will stumble back to the sideline under his own power. Hard to speculate from here, but he appears to be okay now. Yeah, it's shaken up, and um, I just got his bell rung. That was a big pal there. Johnson was in on the bottom. The Mean Green last in the conference in total yards, even though they've increased their point output from 15 last season to 26 points per game this year. And I'll have it, they're down 17-0, 6-14 to play in the first quarter, and they'll snap it from their 27-yard line. Find the two-time Oklahoma Player of the Year takes a snap, it's low again on the ground, he's gonna have to run. After he looked to his right, no one was open. He broke one tackle, then he has a powerful run out to the 34-yard line. Jawan Gardner brought him down, but not before Fine muscled his way for seven yards after fielding yet another snap that's on the ground. Tended to be a quick throw, but both receivers were covered, so Fine just tucked it and, and tried to get out of there and uh, really had a little bit more time, but uh, he's uh, he's been under a fierce rush the first two series. Second and three for the 34, a low snap again. Here's a handoff, and we're gonna run it from left to right. The pursuit was there. And Anthony Weish was brought down for a loss of one yard. Weish in there on the carry. He was not able to turn the corner. Calvin Robinson made the stop. That'll be a loss of one. It's the best rushing defense in Conference USA. One of the best in the country. And uh, WKU came into today's game with nearly 60 tackles for loss. That means lots of penetration up front. James are only making 3.2 yards per carry against WKU. So Fine and the Mean Green looking for their first first down of the quarter. Five minutes to go in the quarter. He sends his running back in motion to the right. They throw it that way, and the ball slipped out of his hand. It is on the ground. An offensive lineman for North Texas alertly picks it up before a Hilltopper could gather it in. Fine had it slipped through his hand as he was ready to throw the ball, and it is recovered by Terry Keenan, the right tackle. So Keenan recovers the ball, and North Texas will have to punt it from their 22-yard line. The toppers came with the blitz up the middle. Nobody picked it up, and a uh, loose football. Here's Keenan, Keenan's punt. High, and Towner takes a fair catch at the Hilltopper 31-yard line. 47-yard punt from Eric Kena, who averages 44.4 yards per effort. And WKU has it first and 10. 419 left in his first quarter as they lead the Mean Green 17-0. Uh, on the receiving team number 24. 15-yard penalty, first down. Pot me down. on a run to the left. And we'll see if the tops can damage North Texas through the air again. They have not been able to get it done on the ground with the way North Texas has played. Been playing to stop the run. Here's a snap to White, looking right, throwing right, on the money to Taylor, 24. Tackled on a one-on-one -on -one effort. So he brings it down to the 25-yard line. Taylor with a catch. It'll be third down for the Hilltoppers. McLean, four times this year, he's had more than 10 tackles in the game, brought him down. That was a gain to 10, it's third down and two. White now six of 10 throwing. 
But we get KU this year on third downs. They've converted 47% of their third down plays. And they have double wide outs left, one wide out to the right against a down three North Texas defense. They run Wales to the left side. He picks his way for two and a half, and it's a first down. A Franklin Bank and Trust first down. He just finds a little crease there, Leo. And when he first showed up on Hill, he wanted to break everyone for a touchdown. Now he knew he only needed two. He found a little uh, crease there, picked up two and a half before he's brought down by one of the defensive tackles for North Texas. And it, that was short yardage. Uh, I call that short yardage. And you would think, uh, you know, a pressure defense like the Mean Green, they would have uh, been playing the run there. But only a three down lineman. They backed those linebackers off. So Jeff Brom checked out of probably what was the pass and went to Wales. Lamp, Ray, Halpin, Edwards, Williams, the offensive line for the tops. Here's a snap by Halpin. Pocket sets up nicely. White down the middle again. This time he threw it over the head of Taylor. Nate Brooks was in coverage. Taylor burnt Brooks earlier for a 75-yard score on that same pattern. It's second and 10. Terry Obi has North Texas changed their style of defense any? So far, they haven't really changed it. They're still packing the uh, safeties in the box, but I think, you know, they're going to be in trouble if they don't change it a lot. So they're looking deep. I guess they figured that their corners are really play really well, that they can lock on our receivers one-on-one, -on -one, but I think it's a huge mistake. I think you expect a lot of error, a lot of throwing today with Coach Brown. They fake the draw, and White goes over the middle, right on the money for a first down play. Lucky Jackson with a crease coming right over the middle, and a late flag at the 41-yard line as defensive line met an offensive line and were jawing at one another. It is a 20-yard pass play to Lucky Jackson. Clock is stopped with two minutes and two seconds left in the first quarter. Jackson or Jernigan? We'll check it. After the play, there are two fouls. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 15. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 27. Those fouls offset. That's both players' first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. So the play stands for 20. And White is now 7 for 12, and he's over 200 yards passing in the first quarter. And it's right on a red towel at the 48-yard line. Hilltop is moving it from left to right toward the berm at Houchin Smith Stadium in the first quarter. They take it out of Wales' belly, and White goes deep down the middle again, adjusting his pattern was Taylor, or make that Norris incomplete. A little miscommunication there because you had Shaq Johnson and Nick Norris in about the same spot on the field. Jack Johnson, the hilltopper tight end. Also had a, a blitz up the middle, and uh, that was um, Josh Wheeler, the defensive end, that uh, got right in Mike White's face mask there and took him to the turf. That's why that ball came up short. Mean Green have recorded 21 quarterback sacks this season. They'll rush five, and White throws it to the left side. Tight coverage. Late flag sailed over the head of the wide receiver, Lucky Jackson. And it's going to be either a pass interference or hold on Mean Green corner, Chad Davis. We checked the stat sheet. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul, first down. That 20-yard completion was to uh, freshman uh, Quinn Jernigan. Jernigan, who missed for six, six or seven games of the year with that thumb problem, is started to get back into rotation. They love his future. It's a seven-yard penalty, and it's first down. First and 10 for the Mean Green, 41. 95 seconds left in the first quarter. WKU leading 17-0. White rolling right, firing on the run. At the 31, the catch is made on a pass that was up above the helmet of the wide receiver, Taewon Taylor. He snatched it with his two hands and brought it down before he was brought down from behind by Elia. Good throw by White. He really put something on that one uh, and had to because Elia's coverage was pretty good. Taylor active early. Four catches already in the quarter. First and 10 now from the 31. He has 75 for the season, and Taylor goes in motion. They fake the jet sweep to him, and White will look to go back to him. He's covered, he bombs it left side to Norris or Jackson. That was Norris, and he couldn't haul it in off his fingertips, 
at the 11 yard line of North Texas. Looked to me as if he wanted to turn up field before he made the catch. Yeah, I think he did. Uh, you know, he's smelling the end zone right there, but you got to catch it first. And White, uh, you know, White probably could have gotten that ball there a little bit quicker as well. He's uh, a real soft pass. Wasn't a perfect pass. No. White now 8 for 15 and second and 10. Hilltopper's been running more lately, but with the way North Texas is defending them, they're passing a lot more than they're running today. 15 throws and six rushes. Top of the snap, but they're in the pistol. Wales runs it behind Ray and Lamp on the outside, trying to turn the corner, push backwards. He's at the 36, and he loses a yard as he gets into the 32. North Texas stopping the Hilltoppers. Run attack today, but they've been uh, victims of two long pass plays at Taylor for touchdowns of 59 and 75 yards. Yeah, and we talked in our pregame today. It was uh, Wales who came in as one of the hottest running backs in the country. Last six games averaged over eight yards a carry, and that was a frustrated run right there. You know, he, he's not coached to bounce outside on an off-tackle play, but uh, he didn't see any running room. He averages 6.9 yards per carry this year. Here's a blitz. White is back hit as he throws it out of the right side. The pass is low and incomplete at the 35-yard line looking for Wales. That hard-hitting safety, McLean, was right on him, and it's incomplete. The Hilltoppers aren't able to move the ball. It's fourth and... 12 at the North Texas 33. Well, you'd be looking at a 50-yard field goal from right uh, where they've got the ball spotted, and uh, Jeff Brom says, don't like those odds. We're going to go for it. Skyler Simcox has made two better than 50 yards this year. So 12 to go on fourth and 12 from the 33 with five seconds left to go in the quarter, and they're going to go for it on fourth and 12. WKU this year, six out of 14 on fourth down plays. A block against a four-man rush. White steps up in the pocket. He goes short. The ball's bubbled and dropped to the line of scrimmage. An unusual play. Needing 12 for a first down. They throw it to the line of scrimmage, and Jackson drops it. So North Texas holds on downs, and our first quarter is over. A first quarter dominated by Western Kentucky University. One quarter in the books at Fikes Field. WKU 17, and North Texas 0. One quarter down, Hilltoppers leading it by the score of 17-0 over the Bean Green in North Texas. And a first quarter that has seen the Hilltoppers outgain North Texas 225-0 to zero in total yards. It's 17-0. Well, it's been a big play offense uh, as Mike White has uh, eight completions for 227 yards. It's um, almost 30 yards to throw, but it's been the defense of WKU that's been impressive as well. A lot of big plays, and they've won the uh, trenches here so far. North Texas has 10 offensive plays for zero yards at the present time. This is the first snap of the second quarter. It will come from the North Texas 33-yard line. Fine will take a snap. He fakes. He drops back and throws it to the seam. It's incomplete. Picked off by Leston. And as he's running upfield, he dropped the ball. Hit him right in the hands. Leston, who has had bobbling issues on interceptions this year. He nearly had that one long enough where it would have been a fumble. But he bobbled it and dropped it. I'm not saying he would have had a touchdown, but he would still be running. He had to be thinking about it, I guarantee you, because... He had a lot of sideline to run to and no white jerseys in front of him. Second and 10 now from the 33-yard line. Leston playing center field upset after dropping that one. Here's a snap to find, pumping, rolling to his right, dumps it out to his safety valve, that's Ivory, and he's tossed out of bounds at the 33-yard line by outside linebacker Joey Abunaway. And there's no gain on that play. Mean Green have had it third and six, third and five, third and four. So this is the longest third down play they've had, third and nine from the 34. Tops go with the nickel defense, take a defensive end out and a um, safety in there. Yeah, they're starting tackles of Chris Johnson and Omar Bryant in there right now. And the gun snap and the rush is on and he throws it to the far sideline and he's double teamed and thrown down after only a two yard gain. The catch was by Goree, 
and he was double teamed and tossed down by Joe Brown and Laverick Johnson. It was only a three yard gain. So far, just a smothering defense by uh, the Hilltoppers. The weakness on this North Texas team may be their offensive line. There is a punt from Kenna. It hits at the 25, rolls to the 20, to the 15, down to the 10. Touchdown at the nine yard line. That's an outstanding punt. Got to go for over 50 yards on that punt play. 13.34 to play in the second quarter. North Texas has it first and 10 from their nine yard line. I should say the Hilltoppers have it first and 10 from their nine yard line, moving it from right to left here in quarter two. And we have a timeout, so we'll take a break. 13.34 remaining, first half. WKU 17, North Texas 0. Bill, WKU leading North Texas 17-0. They are tied with Old Dominion for first in the East Division of Conference USA. And WKU with their worst field position to start a drive. It's at their nine-yard line following the Keena punt. They'll snap it, and Wales will run it left side across the 10 to the 15. Out to the 17-yard line, by far the biggest run of the day for Wales, who's averaging just under seven yards per tote. He picked up eight there, and it's second and two. Well, he'll, you know, he'll pet those uh, offensive linemen on the back when he goes there now. He's, he, as I said, he's been a frustrated runner here early. And that's been very uncharacteristic of late because this offensive line had really gelled over the last month of the season. Wales trying to get to 1,000 today, needing 64 to do it the 20th time at Hilltopper history that they've had a thousand yard rushing season. Offense number 51, five yard penalty, second down. Brandon Ray, the WKU outstanding run blocking left guard moved early, the junior from Madison, Alabama. So they'll move him back five yards. He is making his 38th consecutive start. Right tackle Darrell Williams, his 35th consecutive start. Max Halpin at center, 25th consecutive start. Hilltoppers for the most part have over the last couple of years been fortunate they have not had too many injuries in the offensive line. Second and seven following the flag. Make it second and a short eight. Pistol snap. Wales now back to White. It's a flea flicker. Down the middle looking for Tay Juan. Right on the money. Cut it and dropped it. Oh, nope, boy. that was lucky. Nope, that was Tay Juan. Tay Juan dropped it. Right in his hands at the 40 yard line of North Texas. Now, this is a very sure-handed uh, receiving core, but not so much today. That's three drop passes, and then you have the drop by the uh, safety, you know, Brandon the, the Lesson, safety the uh, on the uh, interception. So uh, things get a little bit sloppy here right now. So Taylor drops it. It's third and eight. He just dropped the touchdown. He's had a 59-yarder and a 75-yarder. North Texas, three down linemen. The nose tackle was Hood. Monte Hood, now they bring up a couple of linebackers. They're going to rush four. A draw to ace, up the middle behind Halpin, out over the 15. Makes it to the 18-yard line. Maybe the 19 before the pile shoves him backwards. 19 would give him a first down. See what kind of mark he gets. And uh, they are saying first down. How about that? Kyrie Muhammad eventually brought him down. That pile just kept moving down the field, and... It results in a seven-yard run on third and seven. It's all they needed. Yeah, just a lot of determination, good, uh, strong running. Just kept those legs churning. It's at the 19-yard line, first and 10. Wales runs it again behind the pulling guard, Manley. Now cuts inside for a couple. They pulled Manley, the right guard, from right to left. And Wales that time picking up a pair. Knocked down by Hood, who's six foot tall and 303 pounds. He's a transfer from Kansas State. He played three years at K-State. Terry with our Bluegrass Cellular sideline report. Second and six from the 23. White catches the ball, rolls to his right, gets a good block from Ace. Now turning the corner. Still holds the ball over the 20, 24, and he's pulled out of bounds there. Wanted to throw it downfield, couldn't find anyone open, and Combs, the defensive end, was able to grab him and pull him out of bounds. White will get one yard. And the Hilltoppers have it at the 24-yard line where it's third and five, and they've been pretty good on third downs here in the first half. 
as they lead North Texas 17-0. WKU four out of six. Anytime you get over that 50% mark, you're getting things done. Jackson Norris on the left, Taylor on the right. Here's a snap, White looking left, looking left, now back over the middle. Throw was made shy of a first down. As he hit Taewon Taylor. Knocked down by the corner, Nate Brooks, and it's only a three yard gain. The Hilltoppers needed five. Receivers on each side of the field had run a little five, six yard turnout patterns, but they were both covered. Taylor was the underneath receiver, and you hope to get in there where there's no congestion and give him some running room, but that wasn't the case. There's the first punt of the day from Jake Collins. Turner Smiley to return it. 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Snap right on line, Collins to his right, will boot it. Big punt, back at the 28 yard line. Runs it up to the 32, broke a tackle. Scrambling over the 35 to the 36 yard line. Shaq Johnson on the tackle, Turner Smiley on the return. That is a 45 yard punt with no return and we have a timeout. Hilltoppers having it their way early on against North Texas. 9.52 to play in the second quarter. WKU leading it by the score of 17-0. To this uh, defensive stand. First and 10, a low snap around the ankles to find. They're blitzing from the outside. Joe Brown, the corner coming behind, knocked it away. It's on the ground. It's near the sideline, and I believe Brian has picked it up, and he has. Joe Brown on a corner blitz. He kept running from behind. He eventually caught up to find right before he got to his sideline. He knocked it out of his hands. It's retrieved by Omarius Bryant. A fumble recovery, and the Hilltoppers have it first and 10. And Terry, just like you said, they were bringing the heat this time from a corner. Five-yard loss and a fumble recovery from Amarius Bryant. <laughs> the defense is under review. They are now going to review the play to see if Bryant recovered the fumble prior to rolling out of bounds. Great job by Brown. He came on the backside corner, blitz. And he was tracking the quarterback fine, and, and you know what was going through is fine couldn't see him. Well, Brown knew when he got there, one thing in mind, the way he was carrying that football fine, he was going to knock that ball loose with his right arm, and that's just exactly what he did. KCTCS would like to remind you, higher education begins here. That's KCTCS. Have you ever been involved in a game when you play quarterback where you're, of course, you were under center most of the time or all the time, but I, I don't recall a game where the, there have been so, such poor center snaps. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, and Sam really, Rice is their starter. Renewed, it's not the ruling on the field stands. First down, Western Kentucky. Randy, it, uh, it's really annoying, too, because then as the quarterback, you know, you, you, you've you got another thing to worry about instead of coverages and, and reading defenses. Now it's like, are you kidding me? Now i got to watch where the ball's going every time. That's just a, a natural that you put those hands out there in front of you, waist high, and expect that ball to be snapped there. And if it's not, it just breaks your concentration. This is the second time, making it now the third time, the Hilltoppers have started to drive in North Texas territory. Fumble recovery by Bryant. They're going to go for the downs. Back to pass is White. Home run ball down the middle to Taylor. Got it. Touchdown. Third touchdown of the game to Taewon Taylor. That time over McLean's head. And with 9.35 now to go in the first half, it's 23-0. Taylor with his third touchdown catch. I apologize, Nick Norris, all right? Nick what? Norris, not Taylor with the catch. Well, you gotta spread it around, okay? <laughs> Nick will excuse you, and uh, you know, that's just perfect pitch and catch. Norris, a great route, beat McLean the safety. Ball right on the money. Third touchdown throw from Mike White today. Skyler Simcox for the point after touchdown. Hits it up into the century 21 
in zone, it's good. Now with 9.35 to go in our second quarter, the Hilltoppers are now in front, 24 to zero. Simcox this year, perfect on point after touchdowns, 48 for 48. We'll take a break, 9.35 to go, first half. WKU 24 and North Texas zero. Randy, Leo, Terry with you here, Fikesfield, WKU up 24-0. North Texas came in touting their secondary. They allowed only 208 yards per game. Well, they've been torched today for three touchdowns and 263 yards for Mike White Company. Kind of a replay of the game down in Denton, Texas last year, WKU rolled up a 55-14 lead after three quarters and total 683 yards. Brindellis kick goes to the two. Here comes Wilson up around the neck. He's brought down by Leston. Looked like Leston was in a rodeo. No rodeos in Clearwater, Florida where he grew up. Grabbed him around the neck and tossed him down. 9.28 to go and North Texas is still looking for their first, first down of the game. Well, they've, all, they've only run 17 plays, uh, make it uh, 14 plays in the game. Find the quarterback is three out of six for nine yards and four rushers in the game for the Mean Green. Eight carries minus seven yards. From the 20, the Mean Green have it first and 10. Have changed quarterbacks. Morris is now in there and makes a throw to the right side to Smiley who made the catch. He comes up the sideline and he's taken down into 27 yard line. So. Alex Morris, the transfer from Alabama, is now in the game, and Morris just completed a pass for eight yards. C.J. McCollum on the tackle. And Smiley's first catch, second and two, as Rice will snap it to Morris, who stands six feet three. He hands it off and a run up the middle for a yard and a half. He's pushed backwards. That's Willie Ivory, the junior from Sulphur Springs, Texas. Scored 76 high school touchdowns. Forward progress will get him to the 30, so he has the first down, and that's the very first one of the half for North Texas. Fits a tackle, Chris Johnson on the stop, the junior from Gulfport, Mississippi. Morris was a, the number three quarterback at Alabama the last couple of years. He lost it to the left side, it's on the money, and it's pulled in for about four yards. A, a long throw to pick up just minimal yardage. Kenny Byers, a converted all-conference defensive back. He has moved to wide receiver. He's had quite the year. That's his 26th catch. Picks up four yards there. So Morris trying to give them a spark. He's a better thrower than Fine. 56% completion rate right now. He started the game the opening game against SMU. Pressure coming from the backside. He breaks through the tackle, running forward, slides down feet first. He makes it to the 37 and picks up three. It'll be third down and three. No blitz that time, but a strong rush by the front four. They flush him out of the pocket, nearly had him tripped up for a sack, but Morris good strength to run through the tackle. He's able to break the tackle of Overstreet. Overstreet and Reeves are the ends. Johnson and Bryant are the tackles right now. North Texas has it third and three. They haven't converted a third down yet today as they trail at 24-0 with 7.24 to go in the first half. Rice to snap it to Morris. He looks left, he looks left and throws it, and he has just enough for a first down. Overstreet, the defensive end, dropping back in pass coverage to help out his linebacker, McCollum. And it's a first down for North Texas as it's pulled down for a gain of seven. Kenny Byers again, a nice pitching catch right there. He knew where those chains were, and a really nice throw by Morris. Byers with 114 career tackles at North Texas, but he's now playing wide receiver. He fakes it, he drops back, and Morris goes to the left side. It's on the money near midfield. He'll topper defensive back Joe Brown. Shoving Willie Robinson out of bounds. That's a junior from Fort Worth's first catch of the day. That's a gain of nine at second down and one. You know, I think the freshman, Fine, 
with the early rush, got a little rattled. He wasn't, his feet weren't set in the pocket. Uh, you know, a lot of scrambling. The Morse, uh, the, the veteran, pretty cool out there right now. But the key right now for them is getting rid of that ball quick. Yeah. The snaps have also been better, too. That one is waist high to him again as he settles back in the pocket. And he's going deep down the middle. A high arcing, throwing the double coverage. And it's tipped away at the last minute by the Otava defender. Laverick Johnson. Reach, reach around behind and batted it away. Turner Smiley, the receiver. That ball hung up a long time. But uh, great coverage down the field by the topper secondary. Laverick Johnson had that highlight reel 61-yard interception return for a touchdown last week. Actually, I'm sorry, that was Simmons, 23. DeAndre Simmons made the play, not Johnson. Third and one for North Texas from midfield, but six minutes to go in the second quarter. WKU leading at 24-0. The toppers have six near the line of scrimmage. Here's a run up the middle. Ivory, a big hole, middle 45-40. Lesson slows him down, and he makes it to the 35-yard line. That time, the hole was blasted up front by Rice and Murray and Henson, and it's a 15-yard gain for Ivory. Mean Green now at the WKU 35. This is their first drive of the game that has resulted into anything. They picked up a couple of first downs. They flank out two right, one left. Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator, a great quarterback at Texas Tech. He fakes it to Ivory, rolls to his right, throws it on the run to the 30. Thompson makes a sliding catch for a pickup of five. You find, or make it, uh, the quarterback more so nice uh, throwing motion, big, tall, rangy quarterback, and he's come off the bench. He's hit five out of his six throws. We change it up for North Texas. They're moving the ball for the first time. They're down 24-0. He is in the gun, running backs to his left and right. Blitz comes up the middle. He looks right. He pumps. He rolls right. Bryant coming after, couldn't get him. He stops near the sideline and throws it down the middle. Over Thompson's head and incomplete. And he paid for it. He was smashed into his own bench by the pass rush from Derek Overstreet. He'll top her. Faithful screaming for a holding call. Uh, he, he took quite a hit. It's third and five at the 30. That's just his second incompletion. He's five for seven. Mean Green, two out of six on third downs today. Jordan Murray, the right guard for North Texas, is 6'9. He's uh, the tallest player. In Conference USA, a six foot nine guard. Morse looking left, looking left, lobs it up in the air forever, and it's batted down by Joe Brown at the five yard line. Perfect pass coverage on Terry and Gorey. Joe Brown bats it down. We have now seen two high arcing throws from Morris allowing the Hilltopper defensive backs to make a play. And that's where uh, the uh, receiver, the offensive player, turned into a good defensive player. <laughs> He went up with Brown, just made sure he didn't catch it. Here's Trevor Moore. This will be from 47 yards away. North Texas attempted to get on the board for the first time. Moore this year is five of eight. This is from 47 yards away. And here it comes, spinning, and it will go wide to the left. He misfires from 47 yards away. Four minutes, 35 seconds left. WK will get the ball back after the 47-yard misfire from Trevor Moore. It'll be first and 10 WKU from their 30. We mentioned in our pregame show the North Texas pass defense. They only allow a 51% completion uh, percentage this year, which is the very best in the league, among the best in the nation, and you know, Mike White's right at 50%. Now they've given up some big passes, though. They have, you know, they've given up three pass plays for touchdowns of over 33 yards. On the season, Randy, Mike is 69%, but he's right on 50% today. Here's a run by Marquez Trigg, the power back for the Hilltoppers, a freshman from Glasgow, Kentucky. He runs it behind his left guard, Ray, picks up six yards. First time that Trigg has been in the game. 
It'll be second and four now at the WKU 36 yard line with four minutes and 17 seconds left in the first half. Trig, a big day last week in a route of uh, Florida International. His last 30 carries, he's picked up 152 yards. That's covering three games. White under center, North Texas with a down three. Here's the snap and the run. Trig up the middle. Needed three, picked up two. It'll be third down and one as he ran into linebacker Fred Scott, who a couple of years ago as a sophomore was the first sophomore to start every game at middle linebacker more than a decade at North Texas. The toppers have it third and two with 3.30 to play in the first half. It's the third and one from 39. Brings off the right shoulder of White in the pistol. Shaq Johnson's a tight end left. Jimmy Sims not in the game right now. Johnson's the only tight end. Third and one from the 39. Play clock is at three. Halpin gets it off. Inside run by Trake. First down carry behind the right guard out to the 44-yard line. He picks up five. Joe Manley, the lead blocker, the right guard. Miner, who blocked the punt and returned it for a touchdown against Tennessee last year, made the stop. Well, tops have two very promising freshman running backs. Of course, Quinn Baker played a lot back there in the backfield. It's been a depleted uh, group back there. They, lo they lose uh, DeAndre Furby, the number one back early in the year, to a shoulder injury. First and 10, a Franklin Bank and Trust first down. It's at the 44-yard line, 2.34 to go. Hilltoppers trying to milk the clock. Get down the field, score a touchdown with a few seconds remaining. Here's Baker, his first carry. Nope, that gets Trig. Trig out over the 45 to 47. He picks up three, running behind Lamp. This high octane offense, uh, you get three or four rushes in a row, and the fans around here are like, what's going on out there anyway? <laughs> let's, let's put some air underneath it. Yeah. No team in college football has scored more points per game than the Hilltoppers have in the last three years. 43.7 points per game. Oregon's number two in the country. Expect a big play here because you know what, Leo, you're right. They're, they're just playing man-to-man -man locked, and they got all everybody else in the box. There's no help. Drake runs it left side behind Ray and Lamp across the 50, down the sideline to the North Texas 45-yard line. It's a first down as Lamp had a pancake block. He put Miner down on his back in front of the North Texas bench. And the Hilltoppers pick up a first down. It's a gain of nine. Now see if they dial it up here at 90 seconds to play in the half. Play action, White back looking to the right side. It's on the money, and the catch is made. Down the sideline comes Nick Norse, but he stepped out of bounds. So make the catch for 12 yards to the North Texas 32, where it's first and 10. The clock has stopped now with a minute 22 to go in this first half. Boy, Norse is an electric runner, uh, and he uh, works on that sideline there, and he was off to the races, but he just stepped on the White there. Clock is inadvertently running right now. The officials will get together. Please reset the game clock to 122, and it will start on the snap. So they'll put five seconds back on the clock to a minute and 22 to go, and the Hilltoppers have it first and 10 for the Mean Green 32 yard line. Hilltoppers in front, 24 0. Looking to win their 13th in a row at home against a Conference USA team. Back to pass, White rolling right, dumps it short. Caught 30, 25 down to the 22 yard line. That was Trigg out of the backfield. It's just his second catch this year. Trigg will take it from the 32 to the 21, and that's an 11 yard gain. White thought about running that ball, but he said, I'm not a runner. I'll give, dump it off to one of these guys that uh, do it better than me. Trigg runs it right side, tripped up at the 18. Hilltoppers may be forced to take a timeout now, only a two yard gain. Letting the clock tick down, 50 seconds. Under 50, that was minor with a stop. Second and eight, 42 seconds are left. Here's a run by Wales up the middle. 15 down to the 10, inside the 10 to the eight. It'll be first and goal. 
Wester gets and now a timeout is taken first. after Wales races it up the middle for 13 yards. So Jeff Brom takes a timeout. It is first and goal at the North Texas nine. And uh, Leo and Terry, this is a picture perfect drive consuming up. The goal is to virtually eat up the entire first half clock. Trigg's been the story of the drive. Six carries, 28 yards, and he also caught that pass for 11. So he's chewed up a lot of that clock, and we've seen Coach Brom, you know, keep those guys in the hole, let that 40-second clock wind down with the big lead. And uh, they position themselves now inside the 10. First and goal at the nine. First and goal at the nine. Jackson to the left, Norris and Taylor to the right. White has thrown three touchdown passes today. It's at the nine, first down goal. 37 seconds left, they fake the pass. They'll throw it out, they'll run. They throw it out to the right side to Nick Norris. He's pushed out of bounds inside the five. He'll get to the four, five yards for Nick Norris. How many yards do they have him now for, Leo? Three, they spot three, three for 60 for that one before that one and uh, he picks up what five there one yard away from a thousand he's at 999 this year one yard away from joining Taewon Taylor for going over a thousand for the season that has never happened in Hilltopper football history second and goal from the three they run it left side to Ace he walks in and scores Ray and Lamp just blew him off the ball and there was no one around Ace wasn't even touched and Ace Wales has now scored 18 rushing touchdowns this year. And the Hilltopper lead goes to 30 to zero. You know, Marquez Trigg, as we said, uh, kept pounding, but the story of that drive was the offensive line. The Hilltoppers use up four minutes and five seconds on that drive. And now they try to run a fake extra point. Flag was thrown as they sent the holder Collins the in motion. Five yard penalty, replay to try. They lined up three player, two players behind the center, Dowling. Then the other eight are on the other hash mark to the left side and saw Collins take off running and uh, something wasn't legal there. In fact, Collins didn't have the ball. Tony Levine, the uh, special teams coach here, former head coach at um, University of Houston is uh, a lot of things he makes you prepare for. He's one of the very best special teams coaches in the country. 27 seconds or left. Skyler Simcox for the point after touchdown. After the penalty, he kicks it from the 15, so a 25-yard extra point is perfect. And with 27 seconds left in this first half, WKU leads at 31-0. 11 plays, 70 yards for WKU there on the drive. They only leave the Mean Green with 27 seconds to operate with. And that was the State Farm drive of the game. Here to help life go right. 11 plays, 70 yards. They took it over with four minutes and 39 seconds left in the second quarter, and they were milking the clock. They were trying to use as much time off the clock as possible. Mission accomplished. Only 27 seconds are left. Yeah, great balance on that drive, too, with the run and the pass. WKU now with 351 yards total offense here in the first half. 292 of that through the air from the arm of Mike White. Alex Ranella from the 35-yard line will put foot into the ball for a blue cotton kickoff. Blue cotton located right here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Ranello will step to his left between the left hash mark of the sideline, now approaches the ball and sends it down the ground. It's a ground ball. It'll be gathered up at the 25-yard line. And North Texas runs it over the 30, 35-40, out to the 42. Scooping up uh, gleefully and running back up the middle was Ladarius Hamilton, who's a defensive end. It was his time to shine. 
See what North Texas does when you're down by this many. You might as well North Texas takes over first and ten. be aggressive here and try to get to the end zone. It's another quarter where the Hilltoppers have at least two scores. We've seen a lot of those lately. That's consistent football. Two scores, quarter after quarter after quarter, or more. Morse is in the gun. They snap it from the North Texas 40. 20 seconds are left in the first half. And Morris is back. He rolls to his right. Rush sends him to the sideline. He throws it to the 41, and it is a catch. Pulled down by number 31 for North Texas, and that'll be Kenny Byers, his third catch. It's only a one-yard pickup. Chris Johnson chasing the quarterback out of the pocket, so that was a win by the defense. Second and nine, 12 seconds are left. First half, it's a four-man rush. He's gonna be hit. Iggy knocked him down, pass is picked up. Now the ball's loose on the turf. It's gathered up by the Hilltoppers at a 43-yard line. And there's no whistle. And running down the sideline and going in the end zone is Keith Brown. No indication if it was a fumble or an incomplete pass. Brown picked it up at a 43 and just ran it back into the end zone. Not the, well, they're saying now that it was an incomplete okay. pass, but we didn't hear whistles. We didn't see officials uh, calling that one back. They let him uh, finish the play. He gave bone away. The linebacker is the one who nailed Morris, separating ball from his hand as he was going forward with his arm. It's an incomplete pass, so it's third down and nine with four seconds left. They're now going to review. Previous play of incomplete pass is under review. If indeed this is a fumble, I can only assume that the Keith Brown touchdown would hold up, and that is a fumble. Don't you think? It could, uh, the angle that we get uh, on our replay that we uh, see here at the stadium, yes, it could very well be ruled a fumble. On radio, we need to take a station identification. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Alec Morris's arm continued forward after he was hit. After review, the rule on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. E.A. Bonaway came from his front side and hit him as his arm went forward. And they're going to rule that an incomplete pass. Very close. It was, and I'm sitting here thinking, where would they spot that football if, uh, <laughs> if they'd overturned that call? They would have had a bonehead dead where the play occurred. Third and nine now for North Texas with four seconds left in the half. Morris is in the gun. They're going to run it here. And it's only a pickup of one yard. Blowing that one up was McCollum as Andrew Tucker had the carry for a gain of one. Well, the Hilltoppers with a magnificent first half as they lead by the score of 31 to 0. And we'll send it down to the sidelines now for Terry Obi, who's with head coach Jeff Rom. Hilltoppers a blowout lead at halftime. It's 31 0. Score big with Burger King with the Hilltoppers win, you win. Celebrate your Hilltoppers victory at Burger King by buying one Whopper, getting the second one free. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. Offer good for three days after a win. This is our Kentucky Highway, the Department of Kentucky Highway Office of Halftime we'll report here as we bring it to you from Fikes Field, the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety Halftime. Show reminds you that texting while driving is against the law. So as you head to your vehicle after the game, remember, you drive, you text, you pay. Just a dominant first 30 minutes for WKU, Leo Peck and Paul. They've outgained North Texas, 351-55. Out first down them, 16-3. to 
Yeah, it, it, it has been, and uh, I don't think anybody expected it to be quite this easy. This is a North Texas team that had improved dramatically since last year. Had a couple of big upset wins this year, but uh, this uh, topper defensive line has just controlled uh, the Mean Green defense, and then offensively, Mike White, uh, what else can you say? Some great throws. 28 plays for North Texas in the first half. They've only gained 55 yards. Hilltoppers, 42 plays, 351, mostly throwing. Mike White, 13 for 23, three touchdowns and 292 yards of passing. And they've done it against a North Texas team that has been very good stopping the pass this year, Leo. Uh, today, however, they've given up three big plays. Well, they were only giving up 202 yards uh, a game through the air. It was the best in Conference USA, so they've uh, – the big plays, what's hurt them? The, you know, the completion percentage, you know, nothing gaudy like it uh, normally is with Mike White, who's hitting almost 70% of his passes. But today, uh, he's made, uh, he's hurt them deep down the field with Taylor and Norris playing home run ball. So at the half, the Hilltoppers are winning 31-0. And we'll have our halftime shows that will continue from our studios right here on the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Graves and Gilbert Clinic. Closes out today's performance with a song recorded by the American rock band Panic at the Disco. This selection was the second single release for the most recent album entitled Death of a Bachelor and earned them a top 10 award on the Billboard Hot Rock song chart. Here is Victorious. The Big Red Marching Band. Oh, dog man, you better grab. 
great thrower. Keep going. You got two more. You got 10 seconds left. Let him finish well. There we go, brother. Finish strong. Finish strong. Oh, great job, man. Great job. Let's give him a round of applause, man. Hey, we want to invite you and remind you to visit Luxury Imports of Bowling Green, your luxury car destination with a true luxury car experience. Go Tops! Here are today's UPS My Choice Around the Conference alerts. Stay up to date on what's happening with your deliveries when you sign up at ups.com slash mychoice, UPS official logistics company of WKU Athletics. Around Conference CUSA, Here's a final, Rice 22, Charlotte 21. Randy and Leo and Terry with you on not only the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network today across the Commonwealth of Kentucky, but on ESPN3. Thanks for joining us for our simulcast. WKU in recent games has had big leads at halftime, and Jeff Roms has always preached they want to play just as hard in the second half as the first. That's their goal now here in the next 30 Well, that's minutes. easier said than done. And uh, we saw that last week against FIU when the Tops uh, pretty well put that game out of reach. And it got a little bit uh, sloppy there in the second half. But, uh, you know, the good thing is, is usually after three quarters, you get a chance to rest those regulars and not risk any injury as you come up, to, you know, with the, you know, the, the really, really key piece of the season now as the conference championship is within your reach. Old Dominion is blowing out Southern Miss, so Old Dominion will only have one league loss after today. If the Hilltoppers hold on here, they'll have just one league loss. Old Dominion has two more games to play. They play ODU and uh, they play FIU and FAU. Meanwhile, the Hilltoppers are off next week, and they'll play Marshall the Saturday after Thanksgiving in Huntington. If the two teams finish in a first-place tie with one league loss, the Hilltoppers would be the East Division champs because they uh, defeated ODU here earlier the year, earlier in the year at Fikes Field. That final was 59-24. Alex Rinell would get everything started here in the second half for WKU. You know, kick it from right to left. Ivory and Wilson are deep for North Texas to receive the Blue Cotton kickoff. North Texas had only three first half first downs. It is kicked and picked up at the one-yard line by Smiley. Runs to the right sideline to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. He's able to get it out to the 25-yard line. Some pushing and shoving after the tackle was made. Drew Davis for WKU is involved in a little after the whistle push with Michael Lawrence of North Texas. So this mean green football here in the third quarter. And they have it from the 25 yard line. Mason Fine started the game. Alec Morris came in and relieved him in the second quarter and Morris will be starting the second half. And we just had a Hilltopper go down as he was lining up to play defense. It has to be a cramp. That's exactly right. Yeah. Right in the open field of the 24 yard line, he just went down. I don't think I've ever seen anyone cramp the first play after halftime. Cool day, too, so it's a little bit unusual to, to, to see that happen. But, uh, that, yeah, they're working on his uh, <laughs> his calf muscles. I'm, I shouldn't be laughing because th those are very painful. They sure are. Terry, have you ever seen anyone cramp on the first play after halftime? I mean, what, what do we do at halftime? Are we running steps? It, you know, sometimes when you're uh, inside the, uh, the locker room, then you come out, and if you don't stretch properly, I mean, it's, it's a cool day. You know, they haven't been used to that. I mean, sometimes that happens, you know. It, and I don't know if it's, I don't think it's a cramp. He's looking at his knee right now. Okay. So. He got hit on the knee, but things happen like that. Uh, especially when you have a stretch, we just come right out after a long half, and then it's really cold, like you said, Leo. You tell who it is yet, Terry? No, I'm, I'm trying. I'm looking now. I'm up on the stairs though, on the side where the parents are at, but he's coming up. It is number, uh, can you see before me? Deshaun Bertram. Yeah, 54. Bertram. And it is not a cramp. So it's a right leg injury for Bertram. I didn't see him go down during the, during the play on the kick return. So Bertram, who is the Hilltopper backup middle linebacker, he wears a brace on his right knee, 
And he's favoring that knee as he leaves the field. North Texas has it in their white jersey tops. They have the black helmet with the emblem in green on the right and left side of their helmet. They have it first and 10 from the 25-yard line. And they will run it on first down. He's knocked backwards. He breaks a tackle. Comes to the near side of the 25-30. Good run to the 34-yard line. Ivory on the carry. Wrestled out of bounds by McCollum. He picks up nine. And if you, you know, if you, you joined us late, uh, Ivory getting the carries today because Tyler Wilson, outstanding running back, uh, not with the team today due to an injury. 833 yards rushing this year for Jeffrey Wilson. Nine yards for Ivory at second down and one. And they will play action, and Morse will throw it to the left side. He completes a pass to the 39-yard line. Gardner on the tackle. First down catch by Gorey, who has two today. That's his 34th reception. He had eight catches in the season opener against SMU. That's a six-yard game. Well, Seth Luttrell, the, the North Texas coach, just trying to get some consistency offensively. You know, the Morris came in there at the end of the half and engineered a pretty good drive that stalled on a missed field goal. Morris goes down the middle, too tall for his leaping tight end, Thaddeus Thompson. Leston was bearing down on him. Thompson started to stretch out, try to make that catch. He was a little too high, and he could hear footsteps as well. It'll be second down and 10 from the 40. North Texas now brings in a fullback. He lines up behind his left tackle. They have Ivory, the running back, behind his right tackle. And Morris is in the gun, the transfer from Alabama. He's back. He's looking. He's hit from the backside and throws it high, and it's incomplete. He took a belt from the backside from Omar Bryant. Bryant has now 13 quarterback hurries this year. That's an incredible amount from a defensive tackle. And the... Mean Green are faced with a third down and 10 from their 40-yard line with 13.40 to play in the third quarter. Our second half is being brought to you by IGA, the official grocer of WKU Athletics. The Colts defense will go with three down linemen now. They bring in another defensive back, and Morse will take the gun snap. The rush forces him to throw up a pop fly out of bounds in his bench as he was knocked to the ground. That time by Bryant again. So Omar with back-to-back -back quarterback hurries. Morris with that 310-pounder right in his face. Threw it out of bounds into a sideline. Five uh, quarterback hurries today for this WKU defense to go along with the sack uh, from Joe Brown on the corner blitz. Here's Keenan with his fourth punt. Grabs it at the 25. The ball is staffed at the 40. Backing up and taking a fair catch is Towner. WK has not been able to get their return game on going today on the punt returns because the uh, Kenneth's punts have been so high. We have a timeout just getting started in quarter three at Fikes Field and WKU leads North Texas on a simulcast today 31-0. To help students attend. Hilltoppers come from the far sideline with their first play in this particular drive as they have a 31-0 third quarter lead. It's the first time they touched it this half. And they will begin the third quarter with their starters. And here is a running play on first down. As you run it off the right tackle behind Disa Williams. That'll be Ace Wales. Carries it across the 15 out to the 17-yard line. Short gain by Ace and... On the sideline is Terry Obi with the father of Nick Dawson Brents, the defensive end for the Hilltoppers. And we'll get to Terry's conversation right after the very next play on second down and five from the 39-yard line. Nick Dawson Brents has been playing well the last three games. He's been suffering from a high ankle sprain. North Texas showing blitz. Now they back off. WKU with three wide receivers, two left, one right. Will delay to ace up the middle. He's got a hole into the secondary. The 25, the 30, the 35, and out to the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 19 for ace, and here's Terry Obi. Yes, uh, on the sideline with uh, Mr. Brent, and uh, we're just talking about how successful he's, his son Nick has been playing today. Uh, what do you think about that, especially that hit he had on the quarterback earlier? I think it's a top-10 hit, ESPN. I'm <laughs> telling you, lights out. 
And, you know, we're sitting on the sideline with North Texas. We have to be pretty quiet because the quarterback right now is getting ice on him now as we speak. Taped up ice, man. They rubbing <laughs> him down. The quarterback's been getting hit all day. Are, who learned that from? Was it from you or from his mother? Actually, it's from his dad. I'm his uncle, but it's from his dad. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Nice talking to you. Back to you, Randy. All right. That's the uncle of Nick Dawson, Brent. Uh, Nick grew up in Louisville, then he moved to Charlotte and uh, went to Louisville to play for the Cardinals for three years. He was there for four, and he's a, a fifth-year transfer. Slow start this year to his one year on the hill. Had an ankle sprain, but he's been tearing it up lately, Leo. He sure has. He and Keith Brown, of course, they're, they're also a fifth-year transfer from Louisville. Both banged up in camp, and uh, but they're you know they've been around football for a long time. Uh, they knew how far to push themselves, and uh, they delivered the bell. Top seven, second and nine. They run ace left side behind lap. There's no one there. 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. Down the sideline, he runs it inside the 25 yard line. Running it behind left tackle for slap. Big run for ace, and he's now over a thousand yards here for the second time in his hill topper career. Went over a thousand on that carry. He joins Sticky Moore, Willie Taggart, LaRon Moore, Bobby Rainey, and Antonio Andrews as the only players in WK history to rush for over 1,000 twice in a career. Yeah, got off to a slow start in that first half. Averaged only uh, two and a half yards a carry, but uh, two big carries here. That one, 37 yards. And Wales just four yards away from the 100-yard mark. First and 10 now at the 24, snap to White, makes a catch, fires it over the middle, incomplete. Down to the 10-yard line, knocked out of the hands of Lucky Jackson. We see that good play by those North Texas corners. They've been getting their hands on balls, so they've given up some deep passes, but uh, the completion percentage for White, lower than normal, and that's usually what North Texas has uh, shown this year defensively. 51% completion rate against their defense. And White's 13 for 24. Second and 10 now from the 24-yard line. Jackson wide left, Norris and Taylor wide right. And White is back, going for the home run ball. Oh, my goodness, what a great pass over the right shoulder and caught by Nick Norris in the back of the end zone. He lofted that ball perfectly over the defensive back. Preston over the right shoulder of Nicholas Norris, and it's a 24-yard score. Yeah, Norris uh, even did a little high five as he went into the hospitality area down there where those corporate tents are and having a lot of fun out here today. Nick Norris with his second touchdown catch of the day. That one from 24 yards away. His previous one was from 33. WKU takes it. They go 86 yards and put up another touchdown. Skyler Simcox with the extra point into the Century 21 hospitality zone. It banks off the flagpole and it's good 10 minutes 32 seconds left six play 86 yard drive we're in the third quarter it took two minutes and 51 seconds on the clock and wku leads it as we take a break 38 0. here we go who's it gonna be who's gonna be? zero over north texas and terry obi has mrs wales Yes, on the sideline with Mrs. Wells, and unbelievable. Ace is two years in a row, a thousand yard rusher, and uh, it's only like sixth in the history of WKU to ever do that. What are you thinking right now? That is wonderful. I am so proud of him and his accomplishments here at WKU. He had to sit back and, and wait in the back wing and behind Antonio Andrews and Leon Allen. He just had to be patient and wait his time, and he did just that, and I'm just so proud of him, just so proud. You know, he's playing so well now. You know what all players, all the guys always say hi, Mom, and give Mom all the credit. He was hurt a little earlier this year. He didn't tell anybody, but I know he told you about it. But right now he looks at 100%. Yes, he does. He looks at 120%, if you ask me. He looks great out there. Um, he's, he's doing what he needs to do to help the team, carry the team. The line is blocking for him. He wouldn't be able to, he wouldn't be able to do any of this without that big offensive line, and I, I give all props to them as well. Back to you, Randy. Back to you, Leo. Terry, that blue cotton here comes the blue cotton kickoff, and it's out over the 20 to 25 to 26 yard line. Smiley returning the uh, kickoff for North Texas. Terry with that bluegrass cellular sideline report. 10 25 to go, third quarter. WKU leading 38 0 on the Mike White touchdown pass to Nick Norris. White now with four touchdown passes today, 28 for the year, and only five picks, Leo. 
Yeah, he's, he's uh, you know, he just hit, hadn't made a lot of bad decisions. Dude doesn't force the ball and uh, really has control of this offense right now. It's his second four touchdown passing performance of the year. This is his first year as a starter. He threw five touchdown passes in the loss to Louisiana Tech. 10.25 to play in the third quarter. Morris swings it out of the backfield to Ivory, who then runs it into traffic as he crosses the 25 to the 26 yard line. EA Bunaway and Brents combined to bring him down. A pass that results in only one yard. Mean Green haven't had much success at getting it downfield in their passing game. Second and nine now from the 27. Here comes a blitz from the outside linebacker. He booed away trying to run him down from behind as Ivy runs it from left to right. He's able to pound his way to the 30-yard line. Took some punishment and Brents stopped him again. Pick up three yards and the Mean Green face with a third and six. This is the Mean Green team that has greatly improved defensively from previous years. Uh, better scoring-wise offensively. So far, they're averaging 10 points per game more than a year ago, but uh, today they've just been manhandled. They have, and they've really had uh, difficulty on third down, just two out of nine. Yeah, they need six for a first down as Rice snaps it from the 30. Rush comes up the middle. This time the pocket holds, and it's thrown down the middle, bounced around, and it's incomplete. One hill topper had a hand on it, knocked it away. That was Brown, the middle linebacker. And the Mean Green will be forced to punt for the second time in the third quarter. This will be Eric Kenna's fifth punt of the day. <laughs> that ball tipped up in the air, and Brown lying, lying on his back. If he looks up, he might have been able to catch that ball. Downer stands at the 30. You know, punts it. Downer wants to get a fair catch. In traffic, backed away from it. And it rolls out of bounds at the North Texas 24-yard line. So we have a stoppage in play with 8.54 to go in the third quarter. The Hilltoppers have scored one more third quarter touchdown. They lead North Texas by the score of 38-0. to zero. Welcome back to your simulcast on ESPN3 and the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Randy Lee, Leo Peckinpah, Terry Obi with you. WKU leading 38-0. Old Dominion blowout today over Southern Miss. Louisiana Tech. They're having a blowout win. Rice with a comeback uh, to beat Charlotte today for Rice's first league win of the season. Norris goes in motion. Tyler Ferguson is in at quarterback and hands it off. Here comes Ace Wilson to the secondary. The 25 to 30, the 35 to 40, and up to the midfield. They're running it behind Lamp and Ray on the left side, and it's a big gaping hole yet again for Ace Wales. And he picks up 27 yards. Yeah, and really starting to get it done on that left side. Uh, the uh, offensive line, of course, that's where the strength in the offense lies. We know that. 123 yards rushing now for Ace Wales. He goes over 100 yards for the 13th time in his career. It's at the Mean Green 49. This is usually the time of the game where the Hilltoppers milk the clock. Ferguson will throw a quick Screen here to Lucky Jackson as he takes off running, drops the ball. It'll be an incomplete pass. And uh, he quickly comes out after that drop. Yeah, that's three drops today for Lucky Jackson. That, uh, Second down. That'll limit your playing opportunities for sure. So he quickly checks out as replaced by Quinn Jernigan. As if he wanted to start running before he made the catch. Tyler Ferguson is now quarterbacking out of Bakersfield, California. He's 16 for 32 this year with two touchdowns and no picks. They're in the pistol. Wales behind him. Ace gets it. Right side run. Bounces off of one. And gets it to the 45-yard line for four. It'll be third and six for the tops with eight minutes to play in the third quarter as they lead North Texas 38-0. They'll be at Marshall in two weeks. That game time hasn't been determined yet. I know the Marshall Athletic Department are anticipating that will be a noon start Eastern Standard Time. That has not been announced. It's not official. That was just sort of their feeling this past week. 
and be an ESPN production TV wise. Bergerson letting the play clock tick down to two. It's at one. And Hoppen didn't snap it in time. But the play continues, and Ferguson fires it deep down the right side, right on the money, and pass interference. Taewon Taylor yet again getting behind the free safety Gray, and Gray didn't look pass back when he was in the end zone. Defense number 21. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Face guarded him, ran into him, and it's a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, and Ferguson uh, probably should have let that ball go a couple of ticks quicker because Taylor had uh, broken wide open down the sideline. Ferguson just late getting it there. It allowed the uh, pursuit to catch up by the defenders. Speaking of ticks, when Halpin snapped the ball, it was at zero. Well, it's 38 nothing, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. That's what I call level-headed officiating, my man. <laughs> Desmond Maxwell now in as uh, one of two tight ends. He's lined up to the left of Shaq Johnson. Here's the snap, and Ferguson hands it off to Wales left side, running backwards, giving it ground back to the 35, and now he's put down to the 37. They've been making a lot of hay over there on the left side of the second half. That time it didn't work out. It would be a loss. Then a linebacker, Scott, on the stop. Getting a little chippy down there, and um, you know, and sixty-five yard run. Speaking of a long run by Towner and uh, the toppers, a little motion in the offensive line. I believe they moved before Halpin snapped it. Offense number sixty-two, five-yard penalty, first down. That'll be on right tackle Darrell Williams. It seems like every game there's been one. And Newtowner hasn't had a lot of opportunities lately. They've been kicking it away to him, and the Hilltopper defense hasn't been allowing a lot of points lately, so he hasn't had a lot of opportunities because of that either. Here's Baker with a left side run. That inside to 35. Ducks under attack. Third, makes it to the 30-yard line. That's Baker's first carry of the day. Turner made the stop. Baker with a seven-yard pickup. Second and eight for the Hilltoppers with four minutes to go. You talked about Towner. He came into this game averaging almost 33 yards per return. That 66 yarder there won't hurt that average. Ferguson repositioning Baker in the backfield where he lines up behind him in the pistol. WKU in no hurry to snap the ball with his 38-7 lead. Baker runs it up the middle, broke a tackle to the 25, broke another, down inside the 10, and Quinton Baker takes it to the four. Baker bursting through the middle, makes it to the four yard line. A touchdown saving tackle is made by Turner. Well, Baker got in the doghouse last week, put the ball on the ground, a couple of fumbles, and um, he wondered when they'd get back in the sea action. They moved Trigg up in front of him today, uh, who was behind him. And, uh, Coach Jeff Brown making a a statement there. You put it on the ground, you're going to lose playing time. Baker for 29. Ferguson lofting it right corner of the end zone. A strike, a catch, and a touchdown to Taewon Taylor, his third of the day. Ferguson with his third touchdown pass of the year, and Taewon Taylor pulls it in. Well, he's special, and he's the um, he's broken every receiving record here at this university, and he'll. He'll go down, uh, what, top 25 or 30 all time if he, if he, you know, keeps up the pace that he's on right now. Well, three touchdown catches today. He's now at 37 for the year. And he's in the top 25 now in touchdown passes all time in NCAA history. Here's the extra point from Skyler Simcox. Perfect. And with exactly three minutes to go in the third quarter, the Hilltoppers are now leading 45 to 7. He's also moved into second place all time in Conference USA. Touchdown catching record. He's special. Uh, you know, the kid uh, has got all the tools and a lot of uh, pro scouts looking his way, and uh, he's uh, done a lot of great things here for WKU. That drive for the toppers. A short one after that 66-yard Towner kickoff return. Three plays, 33 yards. 
minute and 35 seconds is all it took. And that's words coming out of the mouth of a fellow who made a living in the NFL for a while, Terry Obi. And Terry, uh, he's done it too uh, by improving his strength over the last couple of years, especially in his explosiveness. Yeah, you're right. A lot of people talk about receivers, though. It's important to have strong legs, and also, too, you got to have the ability to hold the ball pretty tight, though. He's been and working on his hands. He's been really working on strengthening his hands and also his legs. So he's working, really working hard on running routes and doing that. So it takes a lot of time, and he's been putting a lot of effort and time in doing that. Smiley returns the kickoff from Alex Ranella to the 20-yard line, and he's pounded by Ben Holt right there. So the Mean Green have it from their 20-yard line with 2.52 to go in quarter three. We'll keep it here on TV. We'll take a station identification on radio. This is the Hilltopper IMG Sports Network. Go ahead, Jerry. Great opportunity for some of your younger guys to get in from a coach's standpoint, so you get them on film so they get some game experience so they'll be ready to go next year. Coach Brom does a good job, and Coach Ho does a good job with putting these young guys in. Even we think blowouts and we get we get bored, but this is a great opportunity for young guys to show what they can do. Anthony Weiss shown a sweep to the left for North Texas, and Keith Brown slowed him down. Brown, the Hilltopper middle linebacker, has led the team in tackles in eight consecutive games, and he stops Weiss for a one yard loss at second and 11 for the Mean Green back at their 19 yard line. And he sets the top, the top the uh, Conference USA in total tackles for the season. 223 to play in the third, fakes left and rolls right. Morris throws it to the near sideline. Boy, that was a great pass and it's complete at the 27. Pulled down by the sophomore from Carthage, Texas, Gorey. Yeah, that was a very, very nice catch by Gorey too. Tiptoeing on the sidelines. High throw, went up to get it. Pickup of eight, third and three for North Texas from their 27. A minute 53 to go in the third quarter. WKU leading 45-7. And they'll operate with a running back on the left and right shoulder of Morris. You have Weish and Tucker in the backfield. They're going to pass. He looks left, he stands tall legged. He now rolls to his left, they're after him. He squares his shoulders and throws it out of bounds. He just ran out of time. That was a coverage sack. He couldn't find anyone open. And McCollum was breathing down his back, and he threw it away. And Keenan will be punting for North Texas. This will be his sixth of the day. Down her back at the 33 of WKU. He just returned to kick off 66 yards to set up a score. And Keenest punts. Line driver, Tatter will call for a fair catch at the 30. 20 yard punt, make it a 43 yard punt, no return. And with a minute 23 to play in quarter three, here come the Hilltoppers again with that 45 to seven lead. They're looking, looking at going over 50 again. This is Jeff Brom's 38th game as head coach at WKU. They have scored 50 or more 13 times. And right now they're at 45. They scored 49 last week. And had a large lead and took their foot off the gas pedal in the second half. They're in the pistol. Ferguson will hand it off. And here's a run to the right for just a couple of yards. Marquez Trigg, powerful runner, north-south runner. E.J. Igea, he had even knocked him down. Two for Trigg as we go to one minute to play in the third quarter. The Hilltoppers have outscored North Texas in the third quarter, 14-7. Sam Nord now in at left tackle, or Matt Nord rather. Miles Pate is the left guard. Colin Reynolds is the center. Here's Trigg again over the 35 to the 36, and he picks up three yards. So a new left side and a new center for WKU. Jimmy Sims is now playing tackle, not tight end, and 
Joe Manley's the right guard with 26 seconds of play in the third quarter. It's third down and five following the run from Drake. And, big, uh, and a big third quarter on the ground for this WKU offense. Only had 59 yards rushing in that first half, and they pushed that total up to 185 as they're nearing the 200-yard mark. Third quarter will expire when we return for the fourth. WKU will have the ball. It'll be third down and five at the WKU 36-yard line with a major lead. So through three at Fikes Field, the Hilltoppers are marching on. They'll be eight and three when this one is over, and they'll move to six and one in league play. With next week off, they'll go to Huntington to take on Marshall the Saturday after Thanksgiving. The score after three periods of play at Fikes Field, WKU 45 at North Texas 7. WKU leading after three quarters of play, 45-7 on senior day. 24 seniors are going to play their last regular season game at Fikes Field and exit as a winner. The Hilltoppers have the ball first down and 10 from the 36-yard line. There's a run by Trigg to the left side over the 40, upended to the 43, but it's a first down carry of seven. Gray came up from a safety spot to make the tackle. Thank you, Russ. Hilltopper just ran the ball for six yards to the left side behind the left tackle, Nord. Trake picked up six for a first down. Hilltoppers now have it at the 43 with the entire fourth quarter to play. Yet another impressive performance, Leo. No question. Uh, and, and again, on both sides of the ball. Here is a snap to Ferguson. Trigg runs it to the left, tries to cut it back, and is taken down up high after a one-yard gain. Garner, who wasn't scheduled to play today, their starting linebacker. Nope, that's Scott, 32, not Garner, 37. So Scott made the stop. And it's a pickup of one for Trigg. Big second half for Anthony Ace Wales. Over 100 yards again today, 13th time in his career. Also busted a 1,000-yard mark for his 2016 season. It's a 20th season that WKU has had a 1,000-yard rusher. Back-to-back -back years, Wales has done it. Ferguson fires it over here on the right side to the 50-yard line. And the pulling it down was Lucky Jackson, shoved out of bounds late by Turner, no flag. Jackson pleading his case, asking for a flag. Wasn't a hard hit but he did shove him well after he was out of bounds. Yeah, and you know, here a couple of weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago against Old Dominion, we saw a lot of that ignored and it it uh, it led to yes. an all out uh, bench clearing brawl. As I mean, a Franklin Bank and Trust first down. Yeah, even though it wasn't a hard hit, it, it, it can frustrate players. Sure does. Franklin Bank and Trust, hometown banking at its best since 1958. Colin Reynolds is the center. Anticipate he could be the starting center next year. And the entire right side of the offensive line moved. But the Hilltoppers, I believe, called a timeout before the ball was. Timeout, Time Western Kentucky. Their first 30 seconds. So we'll keep it here. That was a timeout by WKU. And with 12 minutes and 56 seconds left in the fourth quarter, they'll set up shop here and now we're going to take a break on our simulcast so with 12:56 to play in the game wku leads north texas 45 7. At the back of the hill it's been a convincing performance for the western kentucky university hilltoppers they lead north texas 45 7 still with 12 minutes and 56 seconds left to play here in the game as Reynolds leans over the ball, the freshman out of Madisonville, Kentucky, will snap it. He's the backup center to Max Halpin, a three-year starter. Here is a run and a big hole up the middle for Trigg as he takes it to the 40-yard line. And Trigg picks up seven yards. It is second and three. And uh, there's a mean green down. That'll be Gray, James Gray. Gray and McLean are a couple of hard-hitting safeties. They've given up some big pass plays today. And Gray appears to be 
favoring the right shoulder as he leaves the field quickly. The toppers have it second and three from the 40. I'll bring Terry in as well, and, and Leo will ask you this question after this play because I, I think it bears, you know, doesn't, just the way the team is playing, I think it's a fair question as the Hilltoppers now have it with two wide receivers to the left and one to the right. Maxwell, the tight ends in the backfield, lined up behind Sims, his right tackle. And they'll take the play clock down into 22 seconds. They're in no hurry to snap it here with this size of a lead. He blitzing a corner, and Trigg will run it up the middle, and he takes it down to 38. The way the team is playing now, is it a comparable team to last year's team? Well, I think so, Terry, and I, I think uh, defensively we saw the turnaround kind of when they got refocused and got some guys healthy after that uh, track meet loss down at Louisiana Tech. Since then, this has been a, a, an improving defense each week. Here's a third and one run by Trigg, and that's a first down as he runs it behind the Sewanee, Georgia freshman left guard, Miles Pates. And Trigg takes it to the 33 for five yards. I think the run defense is better this year than last. Uh, secondary play, you, know, you had Terry and Awar at the corners last year, but uh, the secondary play in the last four games has been tremendous. It sure has. It sure has. And, and of course, you've, you've got that big pass rush now, mm -hmm. which uh, makes life a little bit more pleasant in the secondary. Four minutes gone by in the quarter. Ferguson, the quarterback, will take it. Looks right. They're coming after him. Throws it back to the to wide open receiver to 30 yard line. And he comes down the sideline, the 15, down to the 10. That was Desmond Maxwell. And now two penalty markers are thrown on the field. One near the Hilltopper sideline and one in between the hash marks. Desmond Maxwell with the pass catch. Ineligible man downfield. Number 79 offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's on Joe Manley. So wipe away the pass to Maxwell. It's the second time the Hilltoppers have had a lineman downfield too soon. And it's first and 15 now from the North Texas 38. Off next week, and the Hilltoppers then go to Marshall to finish the season. The last regular season game of the year. And here's a run by Baker. Up and behind his center, Reynolds. He's picked up and thrown backwards after about a four-yard gain. Igea able to slow him down. Wales with a big day. Officially, they have ace for 121 yards today. About 18 carries. That's after a six carry one yard start yeah he ended up with uh, you know he came into the game averaging six and a half yards of carry and today 6.7 ferguson will fire it to the right side and over the head of the hilltopper wide out of the 25 yard line that was mixon who's now in the game as a wide receiver devin nixon one of the fastest hilltopper receivers Hasn't had a lot of playing time this year. 9.47 now to play as Buck is stopped on the incomplete pass. And it's third and 11. Ferguson started his career at junior college. He went to Penn State. Oh, Penn State. He run the Baker left side and he's toppled over backwards after a gain of one. And it's fourth and 11. Nixon, the aforementioned speedy receiver out of Melbourne, Florida. He's one of those young kids they're high on for the future. Redshirt freshman. Well, it's, it's all about recruiting. Uh, it's, uh, and we have more speed in this program, this WKU program, probably than they have ever had in terms of uh, just a lot of players that can run. They owe here Skyler Simcox out there for a 52-yard field goal with nine minutes to go before they snap the ball. Flags are thrown. 
Somebody moved up front uh, offensively, so this uh, they'll, they'll walk five off against the offense. Simcox, if he kicks another field goal of better than 50 yards, will break a WKU record with three of better than 50 yards in the same season. Right now it's from 51, and they're sorting this out. Let's see what it's all about. Delay a game on the defense for giving disconcerting signals. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, I don't know if Simcox wants that or not. I think he wanted to see if he could you know, <laughs> break the record of uh, three 50-yarders in a season. And I guess uh, whoever it was in red that uh, moved early was uh, kind of baited into that, wasn't it, by the defense? Sounds like it. You don't see that uh, call very often. So here is Simcox. He's hit one from 52. He's hit one from 50. Today's the other one from 24. This one will be from 46 yards away from just inside the left hash mark as he kicks it from left to right. He's got the leg, but it's wide to the right. So he misfires, and the clock is stopped with eight minutes and 56 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. WKU leading North Texas 45-7. Eight minutes and 56 seconds are left. North Texas has the ball. They are trailing the Hilltoppers 45 to 7. Jeff really thinks North Texas is going to be a, a formidable foe in the future. The recruiting base they have in Texas, they have an outstanding complex. And he's high on this coaching staff they have in Denton. But uh, they have not had the ability of the town of today to get it done and there's a run to the right side by Weiss for a couple of yards. Anthony Weiss, a sophomore from Philadelphia. So a long way from home, Philadelphia to the just north of the Metroplex in Texas. He picks up three yards at second down and seven. Well, you know, he didn't walk into a real healthy situation. They let the coach go during the year last year. They only won one game and and they, and they have seen uh, improvement with the four wins this year. Morris will throw it over the middle, and it's a completed pass to the North Texas 45-yard line. It's Kelvin Smith, and that's a 14-yard play. Do you go with Morris since, you know, next week, or you come back with a freshman? Well, Morris is a fifth-year senior. You come back with a freshman next week, don't you? I think so, and I'm a little surprised they haven't maybe – come back to him tonight where he could have maybe ended on a little bit more of a positive note. They didn't protect him well at all early, and that was a lot of his trouble. Morris with a screen pass to the right side to Goree, and there's the improvement the Hilltoppers have made on that particular play. They were able there to defend that, and that was a minimal gain at best. Actually, no gain at all. Over there to uh, make that play, I believe it was A.J. Jackson. And that's the play they... If they play Louisiana Tech in a conference championship game, that's a pass you'll see a lot, and we'll see if they're up to the occasion to stop it like they did right there. It is second and 10 from the 45-yard line. Morris passing again. Rush from the outside. He hit as he throws it. He throws a bullet right over the middle on a completed pass to the WKU 40, and the receiver for North Texas takes it to the 33-yard line. That's Willie Robinson. Really nice throw by Morris there. His kid's got a big, strong arm. Stepped up in the pocket, and the receiver never broke stride. 22 yards on that play. It's now at the WKU 33 with seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Our game today, brought to you by Coca-Cola here on the Hilltop or IMG Sports Network. Number 44, five-yard penalty, first down. That backs up North Texas five yards. Coca-Cola is the drink of choice of WKU. Mean Green needed to win two of their last three to become bowl eligible. Well, that was a shrill whistle. I believe, it's, um, I believe we had a hot mic there. <laughs> There's a right tackle run by Weish. Moves it to the 32 of WKU. Toppers a lot of players now in the game. Duke close over there. Lewis was in there. White in at linebacker. Weiss picks up six. It's second and nine at the tops 32. They empty the backfield. Here comes a four-man rush. He throws it over the middle again. There's a late flag. 
as Kelvin Smith makes the catch Holding. too close. Offense number 59. 10 yard penalty, second down. It's on right tackle Troy Keenan. He held Duke close, and when the official threw the flag, Duke close pointed at the official, and you could just say, hey, nice guy. Nice, yeah. <laughs> nice call. You got him. <laughs> Devontae Duke close. I don't believe the Hilltoppers have a sack today. They've had a lot of quarterback hurries, and they certainly have hit fine and Morris a lot. But did they have a sack? Yeah, they're showing a couple there in the first half. All right, uh, I, I don't I so. thought, the, and, and they were questionable whether they got back to the line okay. of scrimmage or not. So. so a couple of Meyer quarterback sacks today. They blitz hold up the middle. The pressure holds, and now he throws it deep toward the end zone, and it's incomplete. Moore's firing for Gorey. Rouse back there in coverage. It'll be third and 19 now for the Mean Green. There's a number 38 that is now playing for WKU, the defensive backfield, Leo. I don't have him on our roster. We've got, yeah, it is 38. Here's Morse rolling to his right, away from pressure, throws it down the sideline, and the great catch is made by Gorey at the five yard line before Johnson sticks it. 44. 10-yard penalty, third down. But as you heard, it's coming back on a hold. Well, that was a nice throw and a great, a nice catch by the receiver who hung on to it, who really took a big lick after the play, but it doesn't matter. As a second time on this drive, now we've had North Texas with the hold. Push the ball back across the midfield stripe. Makes it down third down at 29. The Corey Darden is the new defensive back. Morris tiptoeing backwards, setting up the screen. The catch has made it to 46. He's across the 50 to the 45 to the 40. He'll top for seven out of bounds to the 35 yard line. And still needs 12 more yards for a first down as Weiss made that catch. Not a, not a great read defensively by uh, WKU. He draws and screens in those long yardage situations. And uh, he really had a clear path down the sideline. I'll go for it now in fourth down to 5.05 to play in the game. Chet Munden now in its center. 305 pounder, freshman from Marshall, Texas, a transfer from Texas Tech. He'll snap it to Morris. It is fourth and 11. And it's a blitz. Moore steps up in the pocket. He's hit around the knees as he throws it down the middle. And it's intercepted at the 10-yard line. It's Darden down the sideline. The 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, the 40, the 30. They're going to catch up to him. He broke a tackle. And now he takes it to the 28-yard line. The freshman to Corey and Darden out of Russellville High School intercepts his first pass of his WKU career and runs out of wind at the North Texas 28-yard line. Topper pr pressure by the defensive line that caused the quarterback to throw a little bit early there and hung up. And Darden, what a thrill for that youngster. And uh, see what they say on the return, but a huge return of 63 yards. He played safety quarterback and wide receiver at Russellville High School and picks off his first pass as a top. We have a break with 4.39 to play in the game. The Darden interception in return has moved the ball to the North Texas 29. It's WKU 45, North Texas 7. Drew Eccles now comes in and plays quarterback for WKU following the Darden 61-yard interception return. Drew Eccles is a sophomore from Daytona, Florida. He's under center. The tops have it from the Mean Green 29-yard line. And there's an off tackle carry for one yard by Baker. Miners had a busy day from his linebacker spot. He makes a stop. 420 to play in the game. WKU has an interception today. They forced a fumble. So once again, they are a positive in the turnover category, which they weren't early in the year. They were at one point in time for the year a minus seven. That has changed completely. They, today, not committed to turnover, so right now they're dead even on the season. And uh, that's a big improvement, as you said, and that's been a big emphasis the last uh, five or six weeks. Baker tripped up at the 27-yard line. 
He picks up a yard. DeMonte Hood was able to trip him up from his nose tackle position. It is uh, third and eight at the 27. So the tops will be off next week before they close the season at Marshall um, in two weeks. Mean Green will be at home next week against Southern Mississippi. They'll finish up uh, the season at UTEP. Southern Miss, without their star quarterback today, went to Old Dominion. They were blown out. They fake it to Baker, and Eccles rolls to his right and throws on the run, and it's a diving try by the WKU tight end Elder, Yelder, rather, and it's uh, knocked away by Muhammad. It's incomplete. <laughs> so it's fourth and eight with three minutes and 13 seconds left. Uh, Leo and Terry, do you fear, as well as this team is playing, I mean, they're on top of the game right now where they have a, a week, not off, but an idle week. Is it, would it break any momentum? You know what? I, I don't think so. I think they just get a, a chance to, uh, they're excited about winning, but you got a lot to fight for. But it's a good opportunity for all the kids to get healthy and be ready to come back and play. Yeah, and I think what you'll probably see them do, they'll, they'll probably get a little well-deserved time off. And uh, coaches will probably spend uh, some time with those younger kids. Uh, get, get them some more reps in practice and some attention. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, third down. And you know what, be critical on them and tell them this is how you hold the ball, this is how you catch the ball. And you get a chance to really coach those young guys up for next year, even for the bowl game. So what's great for bowl games is that you get extra week to kind of prepare the young guys. Hilltoppers had a legal procedure, so it's now fourth down and 13 at the 32-yard line. Terrace Reports brought to you by Bluegrass Cellular, the official wireless provider of Hilltopper Athletics. 3.13 left. Eccles in a quarterback. Six for 10 this year throwing. He looks over the middle. Now he rolls to the right. They're after him from the backside. He lobs it into the end zone on the run, and it's out of bounds. Eccles last year played in his first game in Denton and suffered that injury, shoulder injury. Missed the rest of the season. Echoes throws that one away, and with 3.04 to go, North Texas takes over on an incomplete fourth down pass. Echoes was right in the middle of that uh, three man race uh, for the quarterback position. He and uh, Mike White and uh, Tyler Ferguson. And it uh, went well into the summer in uh, camp, didn't it? And uh, before they made the call to Mike White. And White has answered the bell. Four touchdown passes today without an interception. And there's a movement on the left tackle Offense, for North Texas. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty. Jalen Thomas. First down. Thomas has been all over the country. Grew up in Detroit, went to a junior college in San Francisco, and then the next year went to a junior college in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> coast to coast, right? <laughs> He's seeing the country. First and 15 following the penalty on Thomas. Weiss will run it left. No, they fake it to him, and the quarterback keeps it, and that is Morris. He'll take it over the 30 to the 32. Actually, North Texas has a new quarterback. Quinn Shanbor is now the quarterback. S-H-A-N-B-O-U-R, Shanbor. Picks up five at second and ten with two and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. WKU leading 45-7. Jan Bohr hands it off, and uh, the North Texas runner driven into his bench. That's Tucker. Drew Davis knocked him out of bounds. <laughs> Davis needs to get out of that North Texas bench quickly. Robinson over there to usher him out. Don't need anything happening now at yeah, this stage yeah. of the game. And just nothing good that can happen in that situation, right? I mean, get back to the huddle and get the clock running. Like your parents said, nothing happens good after midnight. There you go. Mine said 11 p.m. What did yours say? <laughs> I can't remember that far back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes to go. It's third down and six for North Texas. The producer Chris Bratcher said his parents said anything after seven. Bad half. Was that it? False 7 start. p.m. Offense number 52. Five-yard penalty. Another false start third on down. North Texas. A lot of different players now in the game. Third quarterback for North Texas. A long flight home for this team. They were hoping to come in here and at least be competitive, and this wasn't the case. They'll host Southern Miss next week. They'll go to UTEP. They could win both those games and be bowl eligible. That's their goal. 
Shanbor throws it high and down the right side, and it's tipped away at the last second by a WKU defensive back. That's A.J. Jackson. Jackson's made some big plays in the limited time he's had this year. And it's fourth and 11 with a minute 31 to go. Really got a good feel for the the, the, the secondary back there with Jackson. He's a good athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, played that ball really well. Here is another keen to punt and Towner will drift back and he'll take a fair catch right in his face and he makes a fair catch call to 31 yard line. A.J. Jackson out of Seneca High School in Louisville. So we have 123 left to go in this one. The Hilltoppers will move on. It's a red towel waiver from the Hill today. They are now eight and three. They have won 13 in a row against conference opponents at home. And they you know won 18 of their last 19 against conference opponents. And that home record is kind of why you if you're a WKU fan, you'd like to see that championship game, the Conference USA championship game here, assuming they get to it. They still have to beat Marshall to lock that up. More than likely, though, it's going to be in Shreveport. Louisiana Tech beat the Hilltoppers head to head. But maybe Louisiana Tech will stumble. Here is Echoes, and he hands it off. And uh, getting treated harshly on that carry was Trigg. He's bounced backwards by Hood with... A minute 13 to play. And he's dropped for a two yard loss. We'll have our Med Center Health Post Game Show in just a couple of minutes. Med Center Health is the hospital of choice and the healthcare provider for WKU. Also, our final minute brought to you by Minute Mart for everyone living life in the go. The toppers will have to run just one more play. Echoes is under center, Triggs in the backfield, and Here's a carry by Trigg, and he's hit again by Hood as he carries it for a couple. And that'll win this one. So the Hilltoppers in back-to-back -back years have played extremely well and handled North Texas. A year ago, they went to Denton and took care of business. Won that game a year ago, 55-28, and they win this one by the final score of 45-7. A tremendous effort, really, in all aspects of the game today, Leo. It was, and uh, yeah, again, you, you're talking about a football team that's playing its best at the end of the year in jail, and they just keep getting better. Defensive side of the ball today, outstanding. And, uh, you know, that's about three or four weeks in a row now of some real solid defensive football, and and uh, and we know that even before that how good they were offensively. Blowout wins over ODU, FAU, FIU, and now North Texas. They've won five in a row since that uh, tremendous double overtime win against MTSU. So they are now 8-3 and three as they finish up their last regular season home game. They sent 24 seniors home with a big smile on their face today. WKU goes to 8-3. and three. They're now 6-1 and one in league play. North Texas falls to 4-6, and six, and they are 2-4 and four in league play. Once again, today's final score, WKU 45 and North Texas 7. So for Leo Peckinpah, I'm Randy Lee saying so long from Bowling Green, Kentucky. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.